I've been backpacking all year long and I've just been trying to figure this out. For my upcoming Appalachian Trail through hike, I really have been trying to figure out what is the best way to get a good night's sleep. When you're gonna hike 2,200 miles, you need to have a sleep system dialed in. So it's trying to solve this sleep system equation has been difficult. But what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna go over all the equipment that I've tested and I'm gonna help you try to figure out what works best for you as well. We're gonna start first with the mattress. When I first started backpacking, I jumped onto Amazon and I bought the Amazon Special. This is the Clement Static V2 mattress. This is the budget backpackers option when it comes to having a mattress to sleep on when you're gonna tent camp. So this mattress has these baffles that kind of loop this direction. So it does give you a, a good comfy night of sleep. However, with an R value of 1.3, it's not necessarily gonna keep you warm. The things that I liked about this mattress, it is a uh, 25 by 72 mattress, so um, you got plenty of room on the mattress. The things that I dislike about the mattress is this valve system. Right here, you flip it over to deflate and that will let the air out of the mattress, but what I find really hard to do is to close this lid. As a matter of fact, I couldn't even get it closed for this video. So. This mattress, as far as the sleep equation goes, has to be eliminated. So after studying a little bit more about backpacking mattresses, I came across this company called Zenvivi. Now Zenvivi makes a fantastic product. They have an all-in-one sleep system. I just don't want to carry that much stuff when I'm hiking that far. So, but I did wind up buying the mattress when it was on sale. Now this mattress has an R value of five. It is a 25 by 72, three inch mattress. It has a fantastic all-in-one valve system. So those are the things that I think that are great. Um, with a price tag of $199, I would definitely try to find this when it's on sale. Um, the things that I do not like about this mattress, the vertical baffle system. The vertical baffle system just doesn't sleep as comfortable as some of the other mattresses do. So, with that being said, I eliminated this from the equation. So then I came across the Big Agnes Rapide SL. It weighs 1.8 ounces. It's $199. It is 25 by 72, but it's three and a half inches. Where you get the extra half an inch is both of these vertical baffles here are slightly higher. So this allows you to cocoon inside in between the two there, and it keeps you on the mattress all night long. I do like the valve system on this mattress, even though it does have a separate in and out valve. Um, it does deflate very easily. It does inflate very easily, but it also has these staggered dimples almost creates um, a little bit of a dimple here, keeping this nice and comfy. Now I slept a lot of nights on this mattress, but it still wasn't the perfect night's sleep. So I had to eliminate this from the equation. Introducing the REI Helix. This by far is the mattress that I have chosen to take on the Appalachian Trail with me. And there's a few reasons why. It has an R value of 4.9, which means that it's gonna sleep nice and toasty. And it's a 20 by 72 mattress, so it's a slightly skinnier. It does taper off at the other end, but that also comes with a weight of only 1.5 ounces. I've added in a Dyneema stuff sack with this thing so that I can keep it as super lightweight as possible. But what they've done here is they've created a dimple system. A dimple system that has created almost like a mattress spring. So the dimple system that is on this mattress allows the individual dimples to adjust to your body. So when you lay on this mattress, you can adjust the air and this thing just holds you like a cloud. So this is the mattress that I've chose to help me solve the sleep equation on how to get the best night's sleep on the Appalachian Trail. The next part of the sleep equation that we need to solve is the pillow. After a long day of hiking, you need to be able to lay down, put your head down and get a good night's rest. And the key to that is a good backpacking pillow. Now, not all pillows are created equal. I used to sleep on my clothing in a, in a stuff sack, but I decided to go ahead and upgrade to a pillow. And this is the very first pillow that I bought. This is a Cocoon Air Core Pillow. And um, as you can see, it's already starting to deflate as we speak. Um, I bought this pillow at the beginning of this year, haven't done much with it other than take it backpacking, haven't really even taken it out of its case, and it developed a leak. 
So this is not a pillow that I would recommend and I knew that I wanted a better one. All right, so after getting rid of that pillow, I started really looking at what's the most comfortable backpacking pillow out there and that's when I found the Nemo Philo pillow, right? So the Nemo Philo, right, it has a memory foam layer on the top of the pillow. It has um, an internal stuff sack. Um, but what I still felt like I lacked when I laid my head on this pillow was a little bit of height. I still felt like my head was a little bit more tilted and with a no strap or anything to hold it to my pad, it kind of moved around as I was sleeping. So I also kept looking for a, a more comfortable pillow or a better option. This is the Nemo Philo Elite. And this pillow, just like the other one, has a built-in stuff sack. Um, it has a valve system that's external. It just still does not come with any type of cord. Now, I imagine I could just go right through this tag right here, go through right through this tag right here, and create a cord. But with both my, with all of my sleeping pads being 25 inches, this is a very narrow pillow. And as you can see, again, it was a height problem. So even though this pillow is nice and comfy, and the pillowcase gives you um, a nice feel as far as that goes, it's still, it's just not high enough to sleep comfortably. So the next pillow that I got was the Trekology, all right? The Trekology 2.0. Now, this pillow right here, let me tell you something. This, as far as deals go, this you can't beat this pillow. You can buy this pillow on Amazon for as low as like $17. So it comes with a pad strap, so it straps right to your pad while you're sleeping, so you don't have to worry about it moving around. It's slightly curved right here, so if you're a side sleeper, your shoulder can kind of fit into there. It has a fantastic height. As far as the feel goes, it feels kind of like a pillowcase. Um, and um, the valve system on it is very nice as far as blowing up and, and keeping it inflated. So if, if you're on a budget, I highly, highly, highly recommend this pillow. But when I'm going to be hiking 2,200 miles, I want the absolute most comfortable thing that I can possibly sleep on. So I got rid of that one and I upgraded to the X-Ped. This is the X-Ped Mega Pillow. This pillow right here is everything that you need when it comes to backpacking. It is the widest pillow, right? It is definitely, um, it has straps on both sides, so I was able to add a strap to it so I could strap it to my, um, directly to my mattress. It has the best valve system. Now, this is not the lightest pillow, right? But it's also not the heaviest pillow. But with all the things that I'm carrying over a 2,000 mile trip, I feel like recovery and sleep is gonna be the most important thing to me. So I chose the X-Ped Mega Pillow to solve my sleep equation. The next part about solving the sleep equation is choosing a sleeping bag and or quilt, right? So I started off when I first started backpacking with a Amazon special. This is the Eco Pro LW250 sleeping bag. This is, it's rated for 30 degrees. It's a synthetic down sleeping bag. It's a very cheap option. And I spent a lot of nights in the sleeping bag and it did relatively keep me warm. However, when it did dip down to about 20 degrees, I did get very cold in this bag. So, but it is a good option. The reason why I changed out of a mummy sleeping bag is because it's just not comfortable. If you toss and you turn, the sleeping bag turns with you. Um, I went ahead and upgraded to some quilts, right? So the quilt system that you have, now your pad is gonna provide you insulation from the cold ground, but then the quilt is gonna provide you insulation from the top air. And this is the very first quilt that I ordered, and this is an El Coyote 20 degree quilt. I did not order this overstuffed. I love this quilt, and, it, and it's worked very well. This is also, this is a 20 degree hammock gear quilt. And this quilt, um, I did order this one overstuffed and um, I ordered them for two different reasons and I wanted to test them both. Now, as far as when I go out on the Appalachian Trail, this one has um, two straps that straps it to the pad. This one has three straps that straps it to the pad. So there's not much differences. Now, when I start the trail, it's going to be in February. Being in February, it's going to be very cold. So I'm going to start the trail with my hammock gear quilt. And then later, once I'm past the Smokies and a little bit further into the year, I'll probably switch off to my El Coyote understuff quilt. So both of these fantastic choices. And this is the last part of the equation. Now we're gonna put it all together and you're gonna see what the equation looks like solved. This is my sleep equation solved, all right? So I am gonna go with 
the hammock gear 20 degree quilt. I'm gonna go with the X-Ped Mega Pillow, and I'm also gonna go with the REI Helix mattress. Now, these things can be very individual, of course, to how you sleep, whether you sleep cold or warm, and also dependent upon how broad your shoulders are and what kind of type of pillow height that you may need. So do keep that in mind. I do recommend that you test your products yourself and that you've taken them out on backpacking trips. If this video was helpful, I would ask you to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.